So, watching this video, you're about to see what they get up to at the Nightcap 4x4 Nature Park. Look at all that. Ripping through that big mud hole. Now, ripping it up, tearing it up. Yeah, really great. Now, all we need is a great big rain. Great, isn't it? For several years now, there have been a steady string of different types of vehicles that have been going up and down Mandalay Road. Cars, utes, sometimes strings of cars, and bulldozers on trucks, and all sorts of things, concrete trucks. Some of the things that couldn't be explained, though, was all the people that were going in strings of, you know, like there'd be two or three cars. They're coming in groups. Why is that? Because as a group, they organized away their 4x4 nature park weekend. 20 bucks a night. And you get to, well, I'd say that Peter Van Lyshout said you can go off track if it's on Lantana, you can wipe that out. Because uh, you start the pictures off. This one's the only one that is remotely recent. That's 2018. All the rest are 2014. And 100 tenths didn't even exist in 2014. But then again, neither did Nightcap Village exist 10 years before Peter Van Lyshout used it in a company document. So and you go through and you look at all the lovely pictures and you think well that's not too bad that's a nice little area this doesn't impress me much because that does look like yeah well what they're ripping it up and they're still all pretty pictures still looking nice and natural and then you get down into some ones where yeah see they come in groups they don't they're, they're like a swarm. They're not going to come on their own. And probably wise too because, yeah, as you go through and you look at them, look at this. These are the, this is what I really objected to. Because here they are. They're off track. They've clearly had an accident. He's gone down the bank. All that bank, that's soft dirt. It's, he's destroyed the bank. Uh, and how many places has that been done to? Then they have to bring in, what's this vehicle here? Is this for regular accidents? Is this something that happens all the time in your 4x4 nature park? Wow, for 20 bucks a night, anybody can come in and go bush bashing. No dramas, no consequence, eh? There's no laws out there. It doesn't matter what they do. The damage they do to the environment. It just doesn't matter. And look at this one here. That looks like a different spot that he's looking at because the other one was on a very steep incline. This isn't so steep. But look how slushy that looks. Well, is he going to reverse into it and see how much mud he can splatter up or something? Will that be fun, mate? See how much mess you can make? So, this uh, 100 tents isn't just people going out and camping. It's people going out in their four-wheel drives. It's a four-wheel drive adventure park. And to make it even more that way... Peter Van Lyshout even made a little, where's his little jump thing, his challenge. Hang on, I'll find it. Here we go. Look at this. This is part of the new play area. That's nice. You did all that for play, did you? That is under progress at the moment. Oh, you mean there's more? Can't wait. When it's finished, this area will provide a bit of a challenge for those that want to try something a little bit harder. 
So that actually says we're constructing a four wheel drive park and we're putting in areas to make it entertaining for our customers. Do you have a development application for that, Mr. Van Lyshout? Now, one thing that should actually be of a concern to people too is that in the Nightcap on Minjimbo official documentary, Adrian Brennock talks about setting up a mechanics garage and a go kart track for rev heads like Mark McMurtry. So, where is the concept of the go-kart track? Oh, they're not going to put that in because they know that wouldn't get approval. They'll just put that in anyway, just like this is being put in now. This is the construction of a 4x4 four four park. And it has to have some kind of approval because, seriously... Whoever's driving the bulldozer through here, do you have permission to do all this destruction and damage? Do you have the right to turn something into a more, more of a challenge by digging it out more, creating more erosion? I mean, come on. There's got to be a line that people can't cross. Yeah, you know, I'm so sick and tired of people thinking, oh, but they can't get on, it's private land, it's private roads, they can't see, they won't know. Oh, piss off. You do enough damage and it can be seen from the air, by satellite, on Google Earth, by everyone over the entire planet. And you know what? Using Google Planet, I could probably even narrow down the locations where this... Google Planet, Google Earth, sorry. <laughs> I could narrow down the locations on where this damage could actually be done. Why is that? Well, there's a fairly large cleared area here. You've got no trees in this area. Dirt roads stand out like anything. When I did my first roads on Google Earth, I wasn't even following Google Road, uh, Google Earth's roads. I was following what I could visually see on the ground was a road. So these roads are very distinctive. And then you also get soil types that come into it too. This one's a darker soil type. It's not going to be more the lighter clay looking ones that are, uh, some of the other roads are. And this looks like it's going past some type of natural waterway. That's where they've created that more of a dip because that's where it's naturally eroded away so rather than instead of trying to fill it up here we'll make it more tough tough for you give you a bit of a challenge but that does actually look like a tree log probably one this side there's a creek running through it don't actually have a topographic map with the creeks on it but actually that might be a good idea to get one for that area because google maps don't show you the creeks and they've got to be running everywhere. So yes, you could essentially pinpoint and say, well, yes, look in these different locations and I think you will find that there, there is damage. How bad is it? I mean, this is back in 2014. This is seven years ago. What does it look like now after seven years of use and abuse of all these four-wheel drives? And we can't say that it's not going on because this string of 4x4s and utes going up Mandalay Road would explain how this is... It's a 4x4 four four park access. I don't know why you're not sending them up uh, the where the village road is, but... I know why you're not sending them up the other one. And when I talk about the other one, I'll just show you that. Hang on. Now, the entrance I'm talking about isn't here or over here at 3222 because that's got nothing to do with Misty Mountains. I'm talking about this road that comes down through here and down to Kogel Road that's actually marked there. Can you see that right there? 
that's the road that was the main access until it looked like hang on I'll bring that up all right so whether this is part of the road or not but it's a clear indication of what the condition is of that area where it's supposed to be a road that there is clearly no vehicle access through there and perhaps up until a short period of time before you know this may have been accessible there could have been a huge washout and it collapsed they've tried clearing it up to rebuild it nothing you couldn't do it or whatever and thereby abandoned trying to use that as an entrance to go up into the park the three and a half thousand acres and when that became inaccessible that's when they started coming up and using Mandalay Road all the time to go up there access it a lot more quickly so that they could get into the thick of it a lot more quickly and uh, maybe that does explain all the heavy traffic up and down here all day every day because they're not going up to the camping grounds they're going other places so it's and there's also a string of cars that will come in in the morning and go back out of an evening they haven't camped there at all what are they doing there and they come out and their vehicles are a little bit dirty and and it's like, I mean, okay. And you think, must have got bogged, must be boggy up there. <laughs> oh, of course, they got bogged. They're out there bush bashing. It's a four by four adventure park, you know. And it's not, it doesn't have DA approval. So it's really anything you want to do. And the thing that would actually concern me in circumstances like that and seeing people that may even get hurt, I mean, idiots could squash themselves under a car, you need to call in a helicopter or things like that. How much public liability insurance is Peter Van Leishout carrying that he can allow this kind of behaviour on the land? Or is that why at this little bridge down here, when you cross it says enter at your own risk so that because that signs up there that you say well I'm not responsible if anything happens to you now well actually that could be argued a little bit differently and certainly if someone got hurt or killed I, I dare say you'd find out how it can be <laughs> argued <laughs> that sticking up a sign does not absolve you of responsibility to maintain certain standards and facilities and emergency procedures within your non-DA approved 4x4 nature park. So public liability insurance probably doesn't actually exist because if it's not a legitimate business, why would you have legitimate insurance? And that's why the sign's on the front. So if anyone does get hurt, they'll just go, oh, go and look at that on the gate. And they'll go, oh, yes, you're right. It does say, enter at your own risk. It doesn't matter that they died because you did all these stupid things and made these, oh, let's make it tricky for you, and they killed themselves doing it. No, we won't worry about that because you stuck up a sign there that said enter at your own risk. Uh, there's a, such a thing called measured responsibility and liability, Peter Van Leishout. So it's unclear how 100 tents and the tourist cabins up here have morphed together in one, but they seem to access this same area of you know let's go into the park and four by four and have some fun but I think the people that come up to the tourist accommodation they may camp there and they may go driving off along these roads but maybe they're just content to just sit peacefully and quietly they don't want to be off hooning around in a car and getting into trouble and stuff like that 
And imagine if you are sitting out there enjoying this beautiful natural quiet and then a bunch of three rev heads come along in their four by four and they get bogged. And all you can hear for hours is them swearing and yelling because they can't get it out. And then they say, oh, we can't even get a signal. And yeah, that is really something you want to hear in the country, isn't it? So if you look at 100 tenths, it is an ABN that has a trust for the PVL Investment Trust and that was registered on the 1st of May 2008 and then attached to that as its business name was a business name of 100 tenths that was registered on the 8th of July 2020. So up until that point there was no registered trading name of that particular trust but now it has a business name that it trades for and that also is registered to pay GST from the 1st of July which means that um, there is an anticipated income over a certain threshold and GST will become applicable. And the address is lot 3022 Kyogle Road and it is lot 10 DP double one nine double four seven one did previously have a different lot number and DP number on Peter Van Leishout's DA 06-1054 but uh, don't know why it's changed but it has the official that's the official lot number that lot is not part of the development but it advertises three and a half thousand acres of usage which is part of the development well let's say let's minus 16 acres because that's the size of this lot now there's one da for that lot for any any activity to occur there and that was for a running festival i think that was a two or three day event back in 2015. There is certainly no DA to run a 4x4 adventure park, to dig up the ground with bulldozers and all this other stuff to create fun and jumps and challenges and to let dogs in groups and everything wander through and to actually have what is clearly a string of people that go there on a daily basis they're not even camping there all they're doing is to go there and have a bush bash that's so damaging to the environment and you don't even have a development application approval to do it none whatsoever but then why are we surprised this is where people say but surely they can't be doing that there must be you know some other place where they've got some other way that it's been okay for them to to do this because surely they just wouldn't do that but no they would they have they do but the interesting thing about uh this trustee for pvl investment trust <laughs> you look at the principal place of business and if you were able to see the registered office, you'd see it would be the same as the principal place of business, which is the same address that appears on almost every single company associated with the Nightcap on Minjimble members. And that is for Peter Hetherington of Maduras Accountants, Cavill Ave in Surface. So they all dip in the same pool when it comes to getting the same accounting advice and if they're actually looking at getting financial advice about a decision they should make with another member well that would be a bit interesting because how can Peter Hetherington represent conflicting interests like that same could be said for Billy uh, Fitzgerald's um, bias too in the sense that he represents NCV Enterprises as well 
as representing individuals within NCV Enterprises. So if you have an issue of, uh, well, I'm going to see my solicitor about something I've heard about NCV Enterprises, well, Billy Fitzgerald is their lawyer, so he's going to give you advice that supports his lawyer and not necessarily you because his client has got more access to money and funds and he's going to look after him better than he will you, you little peep. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that has created a lot of conflict of interest because they are using the same legal people and the same accounting people or person. And Peter Hetherington has been with them right from the Buller Buller days. That man would have a lot of things that would be interesting to look at. When they did the statement of, um, what was it, the income and assets, assets and liabilities statement for, to get the loan, they were then going to take that and Peter Hetherington, their accountant at Cavill Ave in Surface, was going to give them a, yep, yeah, they can pay, they're really good people. And it works both ways. But anyway, these are just things that I've noticed because you can't escape the repetitive nature of the registered office coming up as always Peter Hetherington and Medoras Accounting and Cavill Ave Surface Paradise. Uh, it's just there all the time. And it's been there for a long time. There have even been some that weren't with them but now are. So as you get drawn in more closely into the Nightcap or Minjimbal community, you draw on the same mindset. So you're not going to get independent advice. You're going to get the advice that is tailored to suit NCV Enterprises' needs. Anyway, there was an interesting thing too, is that it's been raised with me and I'd never considered this before but when you think about it it does stand to reason that when there is a certain number of shareholders in a company when it reaches a certain level it automatically has to become a public company it can no longer remain a private company when a certain number of shareholders is exceeded now, I don't know, I haven't looked at that, what that number might be, but maybe it's less than 392, which was, is what you would ideally see. The simplest way to own this whole community is to look at the 21 lots as one thing, to have it under one company name and with 392 shares available. And as each person buys in, they get one of those allotted shares. This is then equality. For each and every single person, there will be only one share. Now that would be idyllic. It would also be very simple. And it would be a very clear-cut way to ownership. And where people, 392 investors would actually have clear title and equal share in all of it. But that's where the problems start with Nightcap or Minjimbal. And 100 Tents been part of one of Peter Van Leishout's businesses is just part of that problem. Because Peter Van Leishout does not intend to give up this lot where he, he lives here. That's his house there. He does not intend to give up this lot here that's owned by Kemp Cove. And he is Kemp Cove, of course. He is, however, selling 16 lots that he owns in the name of Zimmerland to NCV Enterprises. So they've got to come up with the money for all of 
all of that 16 along here all that up through there well they've already got that but they just need all that but that doesn't include this slot here too where Dolph Cook is on hang on I'll just put that overlay on right so as you can see there's the title boundaries there that's Dolph Darko Kovac and Peter Van Leishout they jointly own that and this lot here is owned by Kemp Gove and that's Peter Van Leishout all the others except for these two lots down here all of these 16 up through here are owned by Zimmerland who is also Peter Van Leishout and Zimmerland is selling 16 lots to NCV Enterprises and this is where I find it a little bit tricky even now is that because NCV Enterprises still don't actually own this might be under contract but you know what it's not over till the fat lady sings or the, the money's handed over and it's signed on the dotted line so you've pretty much looking at people that have already bought in have been told that this is all the development and when you're buying in you're buying an equal share and equal right in it with your own exclusive use area but that's not actually the case because people are buying in and we've still got the same ownership structure after they turn it from the 21 lots into the 10 lots it would still be the same ownership structure. There's still going to be NCV Enterprises, there's still going to be Peter Van Leishout and Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac. There is, they are included in the project. And this is the thing where Dolph does not want to share he wants more that he wants to own exclusively. So, and you know, I would be a little bit worried about going um, up to Dolph's uh, around there, even anyone building a house around there. Seriously, a guy that comes out and greets strangers with a gun has just got so many problems going on that they are dangerous to themselves and to other people. They should actually be mentally assessed. What is causing that fear and paranoia? Are you up to that much of illegal activities? Is it that worrying about what you're doing in indoors or in those greenhouses or out there where nobody's allowed to go because if they did, you're going to come running at them with a shotgun and shoot them dead, you crazy man, Dolph. I tell you what, Dolph could end up being famous if this community was built because people would refuse to go up that end. They'd only ever come out down this end at 3222 because someone took a wrong turn and then someone took that same wrong turn looking for them and none of them ever came back. And we were all too scared to go in there because we thought, oh no, the Kunga curse has got them and we ran away. No, it's just some psycho Dolph with a gun that gets so paranoid over what Dolph? Seriously, there's not many reasons why you greet strangers with a gun. You can't be up to any good, my boy, if you've got to carry a gun. Who's it to protect yourself against? Those that would come and take what you've got? Or the police that would come and take what you've got. Sorry about that. So, um, the ownership, once you uh, buy into this, there's no clear ownership to the land. There are so many things that are tying it up to actually get to clear joint ownership and not least being that at least two landowners aren't going to give up two of the lots and uh, they want them as theirs 
they will pick who comes and lives on their land. They will probably invite their friends. But they will still have to pay like everybody else. I, I just don't know how those separate owners work in together to give everybody joint ownership. When they still, there's no joint ownership to begin with and yet they're giving joint ownership to other people when they don't even have it. That, that's just the weirdest and strangest concept. And it's something that everybody has been struggling with. How do you actually own any of this? Because NCV Enterprises are not going to give up control of the titles. It will stay in their name. And so will the other two titles stay in the names of those owners. And how many people are already bought in? Is your name on NCV Enterprises as a shareholder? Because if it's not, you've got no legal right to the land. If you wanted your money back because you're not a shareholder of NCV Enterprises, you, well, if you were owed enough as a creditor, you might be able to force them into liquidation to sell the land to get some of the money back. But, you know, these boys already been there and done that. I don't think you'll get as far as what the last lot of investors did. And, you know, mind you, they still haven't got their money back yet. And here we are looking at a fresh creation of people that are going to end up with very, very empty pockets, nowhere to live. And then, you know, you're, this round, nobody's going to actually feel sorry for you because there was warning this time. There's been plenty of warning for everybody. And if you were dumb enough to ignore that, then it is on your own head. The first lost lot of investors didn't have that benefit you do so you've got no excuse none whatsoever and I tell you if you're thinking of handing over money because you are going to get an agreement from them an MOU a memorandum of understanding or that they're going to offer to give you this if you do this we'll give you that and then when you get that, you can do this and we'll do that over there and then you can give this back to us and we'll pay this amount for it. This is the Rainmaker technique. They've been doing it for years and they've actually refined it since the first lot of investors in Bulla Bulla. You need to be smarter than them and not fall for it, but, you know, they're going to offer you so much that sounds so good. And uh, you're going to think about the profit and how much money you can make and how you can have this beautiful piece of paradise. But you're not going to have a beautiful piece of paradise. It's going to be hell on earth. All those people coming from all over. It's going to clash in such a way. It's going to create clicks. It's going to create the biggest problems. It's going to destroy the countryside. It's going to kill so many animals and plants. It's just... And how many animals and plants have already been destroyed in Peter Van Leishout's 4x4 nature park? How can you call it a nature park when you've got four-wheel drives going in there bush bashing and tearing it up that's a oh seriously peter van leishout you are so lucky i am not in new south wales because i tell you what i'd be knocking on your front door tomorrow so not only do we not have a clear path to ownership equal ownership for all people buying into this but there's also no clear path on well what happens with 100 tents and their 3,500 acres that they do bush bashing in? What about Misty Mountains tourist accommodation that seem to do exactly the same thing because they seem to have merged together? Oh, what about all these things that don't fit? 
What about the absence of anything that's going to go into this little square? What's going into the village? Will it have 27 commercial buildings? Will they put in a conference centre? Will they plan to have a conference that will bring in 200 people into the area on top of all the population that they intend to bring in? Ah, who knows? Nobody knows because with them any bit of information is a closely guarded secret. You can't ask them any questions about the development. It's just not your right to know. And then they tell you to go do your due diligence. If you try to do your due diligence, they'll tell you you can't know. And then you go and look somewhere and they say, well, you shouldn't have looked there. You should have asked me. And so, well, I did ask you, but you wouldn't answer me. You told me to go look somewhere else. It's like, well, yeah, well, you're a twit. Go away. See, this is how they'll dismiss you because I found out very quickly and easily that all you have to do is ask them why there's confusion over there was no DA Lodge. Now, this was last year. And Rich Moat sends an email back to you saying, well, thanks for inquiring, but we don't think you're suitable. We think you'll find something better somewhere else. So in other words, as soon as you start asking questions that shows that, well, hey, this person might have brains. No, 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 out, out with them. Well, there's a bit of a problem with that, isn't it? That when you're relying on those people that have got what? Disposable incomes in inheritances and uh, superannuation funds, any savings, um, anything like that, that you can convince someone to part with. And it's not a very good thing because, you know, that's just like ripping off um, pensioners and things like that. It's just taking advantage of people. Because superannuation is someone's long-term savings. And all they're doing is taking other people's superannuation and building their dream on it. If you've put superannuation into this, it's gone. I'm sorry to tell you, but it is gone. It might look like it's all still there on paper, but <laughs> it won't be one day. And one day you will realise that there is nothing to give back. The only thing you can do now is try and sell any assets and divide it amongst the creditors. And deja vu, that's what they did at Bulla Bulla. And as the problem that created Bulla Bulla expanded out into the bigger problem of Nightcap on Minjimbul, that just means that you're going to have a bigger problem when you realise that these empty promises have been going on for years. So many of the things that they actually want to achieve cannot be achieved. They even know it. There's a lease over here for so many years with the forestry. They can't touch the trees. So nobody could build here till at least 2033. So what are you going to do? Sell those lots to someone and say, well, your grandkids might be able to build on them one day. Well, you can't clear them. And we don't know when they are cleared, if they would ever be cleared, because we don't control the trees there. The forestry department does. So to actually think of putting houses in that area that they don't even can control to actually do that, Oh, it's mind-numbing and it's terribly arrogant saying, now look, we can just whack them all in here. It doesn't matter that the forestry has leases and we can't do it. Ah, oh, stuff it, just shove them in there. It looks good. No, it doesn't look good. Because all that, all this, all the way down here is forestry. It's leased to the forestry till 2033. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that they have not been able to do, even to the minimum standard that would be required to even be looked at 
as being compliant with enough things to get approval. It, it just needs so much work to it. It's like if a kid came and gave you homework and you had to cross through every paragraph. In the end, you just said, look, I'm not going to finish marking this. I just want you to go away. I want you to change the whole lot. I'll give you X amount of time to do it. If you can't, you fail. That's exactly what should happen with these people because they're going to drag their heels in answering anything. Because the longer they drag their heels, the better it is for them. Because they need to come up with a lot of money over the next couple of months. Money they don't have. And not enough investors that may even have the money. So they may even have to mortgage 322. That'll be interesting. See what unfolds with that. You've still got a few hours left to put in a submission against NICAP on Mingible. If you haven't done it, throw in a few lines and send it off. doesn't have to be grand. Just have your say and do it. Anyway, I'm going to leave my little expose on the land and its peculiarities and what Peter Van Leishout's been up to for another day. <laughs> and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.